Today in this tutorial I'm going to explain how to use your PIC Micro and your PICIT2 to interface with your computer. Uh, this removes the need to use LCDs and other displaying devices just so you can display raw data or uh, progressional steps through your program. So I've already loaded the program onto the PIC Micro. I'll start off by building my circuit. Okay, so this is my circuit built. As you can see, there's not much to it. The program is just an echo-based program, so there's no other, nothing else going on at this stage. And now to connect up my Picket 2 by following the diagram found on the UART tool down the bottom. Now everything's finished except for power. And once I've connected power, my program will just operate as an echo program. Anything that I send from the computer We'll go through the Picket 2 to my Pic Micro, my Pic Micro will read it and then send it back to the Picket 2 so you can see it on the uh, UART tool. And I'll show you how to do that now from the PC. This program is designed to give you a brief example on how to use UART and however you use it from here on is up to you. Basically I've designed it so that it's an echo program and it just sends the data uh, straight back after it's received it. So whatever you send to the Pic it will then send back to the Pika 2 so the Pika 2 can display it on the UART screen. I've started off by declaring the device and clock speed. Because I'm using the ADF 18F4550, I'm going to use the internal oscillator, just so there's less external uh, components and, and the such. The usart.bas library has all the uh, modules and routines to handle all the functions of the onboard hardware UART. It's handy to use the uh, hardware UART because it's less code overhead and later on in some other tutorials I'll show you how to actually use it with uh, interrupts and, and the such so your program can be doing something else and will only service the uh, UART routine if there's data available. First line of code is setting up the internal oscillator for 8 MHz and then it'll go to this usart.setboardrate BR9600. Basically this sets the board rate to 9600 so that means there's going to be 9600 bits per second uh, or changes per second in the uh, data transmission. This synchronizes both the PIC and the UART so it knows what, what frequency or what speed everything's working at so you don't get any data corruption. The while true statement is an infinite loop, just a great handler for your main programs. And in here is the uh, the, the main programs as such. It's just going to usart.writeblight and then usart.readblight. Basically it'll keep waiting until it gets a a, um, an input from the UART and once it has, this is on the PIC side, it'll then write it back to the PICKET2. So it's just echoing anything that comes out and as soon as it does perform that it'll just go back to the infinite loop and perform the function again. This is my PICKET2 software. Click on tools, click on UART tool and providing you've hooked up your PICKET2 and your PIC micro like this diagram here then you should be good to go. Select your board rate, hit connect and now you're ready to start sending data. The echo on option box here enables or disables the transmitted data to be displayed on the screen. I usually deselect it that way when I type in uh, a statement say hello world and then click on send that sends it to the pic micro and this is the response from the pic micro. If I had echo on enabled and change the uh, statement to say hello bill you see it appear twice because it's displaying the transmitted data followed by the received data. With this it, it completely removes the need for having LCDs or other uh, user interface displays primarily designed for uh, debugging your software and the such like waiting for something to happen and then you can just have one line of code that sends out a uh, function has been carried out and it, would just, it would, will be displayed up here and with only a couple of wires you can have this instantaneous or near instantaneous uh, data transfer and providing you've got a fast enough clock speed you can actually wind the uh, UART to something very fast so it has minimal code overhead on your program. 
Well, I hope this has helped someone out and uh, have a look at the other tutorials on how to use uh, interrupt-driven UART routines.